Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. This episode is about how I set up the CG of my airplanes with a weight control system I designed. Now, typically balancing an airplane for its CG position is once you establish where on your model the ideal CG is, and you'll get that either off the plans or the instruction booklet that came with your airplane. And a very common way of balancing airplanes, uh, now of course one of this size, you need two people, but you could place you know, your finger, you know, uh, position it properly on the wingtip, line it up with the CG, you raise the airplane, and then you monitor whether it's tail heavy or nose heavy, or if you're lucky, it's right on, which is very rare. And then you make the appropriate weight adjustments. And quite frankly, normally, uh, once you establish that, most people leave it that way. However, though, I like the option of being able to change my CG over time or at any time I want to do that. And let me show you what, how I go about doing that. I've designed a weight control system, and that is the entire black unit that you see here. The black unit is bolted onto a frame here. There's blind nuts inside. Literally only takes a few minutes. You can remove the entire black unit, and that'll give you full access in the engine compartment. This is made up of quarter inch plywood. It has a 1 8 inch plywood base, and this half moon shape here is removable. This unit is actually bolted to this frame. And the way I've done that is I've got a bulkhead in here and another one here, and there's two blind nuts in there. You could use one bolt on, on either side, but I happen to use two. And then it's constructed of 1 8 inch plywood here and 1 16 uh, balsa wood over the top. You could use whatever material you ultimately want. And I use 116 balsa wood here because it's very easy to get the curve. I mean, you could use uh, one uh, 30 second plywood too, would work well. You leave the center section open. And for balancing the airplane, I use a Zykroy balance and weight meter system, which is basically a computerized weight and balance system that lets me in real time monitor where the CG is. Actually, it's so smart, it'll even tell me how much weight to use. So I leave this part open, and what I use for a weight is number nine lead shot. Now, these are the pellets they use in shotgun shells. So if you go to a, like a hunting, sporting type shop that sells reloading uh, equipment, for people that are shotgun enthusiasts who reload their shotgun shells, they are able to purchase the pellets. And what, so if you go to one of these places, uh, you'll be able to buy this. Now, <clears throat> this is number nine, but they come in different numbers. The smaller the number, the bigger the pellets. I like number nine because it takes so little space compared to bigger pellets, because you have air spaces then in between. And it's incredibly heavy. For its mass. The other thing I like about it, <clears throat> it pours out just like water. So it's by because they're so small, you can be very precise as you're pulling in. And this entire chamber here is is an empty cavity, and I have yet ever to have, have to fill it up. And <clears throat> one of the nice things about this system, the weight is being applied as far forward as you possibly can. A very typical way of uh, weight, how it's added on an airplane, it's either attached to the forward section of a firewall, but like in this airplane, there isn't much space in the firewall, just by the way this engine's installed and the muffler being bent in the back. Or sometimes the weight has to be added behind the firewall, or in some cases, people will fiberglass in the uh, lead weights into the uh, cowling. I personally don't really like that. I feel it puts undue stress on the cowling, particularly the attachment points. And, and one thing to keep in mind, which is interesting, 
by the fact that the weight is as far forward as you can get it, I actually need less weight to establish the CG position. In other words, if I was applying the weight back here on the firewall, I would need more weight to establish the same CG position. In other words, the closer you are to the CG applying the weight, the more you're going to need. So by the fact that this is as far forward as possible, and I'm adding the weight and using less weight, the overall weight of the airplane is less. And ultimately, that's what you want. So this airplane still has to be maiden. So the way I've set it up, I've established the CG position and I made it a little bit nose heavy so that its stability will be predictable on the maiden flight. However, over time, as I get more and more familiar with the airplane, I have the option of moving the CG back. This airplane, historically, the Fokker D1, was known as a very agile combat aircraft. It was highly maneuverable. So I would like the option at some point to move the CG back. Because as you move the CG back on an airplane, it actually becomes unstable. But it's that characteristic that gives it its great maneuverability. So I can easily do that by just unbolting this uh, module on the top, removing it, and because I have the shape already, it wouldn't take long just to cut another piece out like that and one in the back and on the bottom and then doing the weight process over again. One of the things that I like about the Zycoy, I can do it by myself. Uh, as a matter of fact, the airplane's sitting on a table. I don't have to lift it. I don't need another person. And it's incredibly accurate. So that's why I designed the system. Now with different airplanes, because uh, of the cowling design, I have to redesign this. And I'll show you what I've done to some other airplanes. But quite frankly, most airplanes that are the kind of radial cowling shape, this is what I typically use. Now, if I have a dummy radial engine, then this would be moved back slightly. And then I'll have a dummy radial engine, which, by the way, gives me an attachment point for my dummy radial. So the other thing uh, this does, and I design make design changes, is to control the airflow within the engine compartment. So that's what I typically do to manage the weight uh, in an airplane for CG position. So I'll show you what I've done to some other airplanes, and then I'm actually going to show you in real time how the Zycoid computer works uh, by adding and subtracting weight to the airplane. So here we have a, another weight and balance module I designed for this particular airplane. Now, because of uh, cowling restrictions, like this particular cowling, as you can see, is not like a round radial aircraft design cowling, it's flat. So by virtue of that, um, I had to design it, uh, you know, in a different shape. Now, this is a quarter 20 socket head bolt with a blind nut in there, and also has the required amount of number nine lead shot, uh, and it's uh, encapsulated in epoxy resin. It's a rock solid mount. And um, again, it would just basically not even take a minute to change it if I ever wanted to uh, uh, play around with the CG position. And of course, being an aerobatic airplane, the Cap 10, it was something I would definitely entertain uh, in the future. Now, in this particular airplane, I simply use uh, sardine cans and uh, fill them up with lead. And uh, they are uh, epoxy resin. And then there was a wooden top uh, placed over to close it up. And then I actually just drilled right through it and bolted them on. So these are very simple to use if you don't want to really make a custom system. They work quite well. It's a very clean installation. And they're easily removed so you can have access to your engine compartment or change the weights as you desire. So now what we're looking at is the computer screen of the Zycroy uh, balance and weight meter system. Now you can see it says here Fokker DR1 because the data that the computer requires has been pre-programmed. 
and it'll actually hold up to 100 airplanes in its database. These measurements here are predefined measurements that you have to take and program into the system. This forward point here is actually the black compartment unit that I put my weights in. So it knows where we'll either be adding or subtracting weight. This is the predetermined CG position that I want, which is measured at 54 millimeters. Now, typically most airplanes have a range. And so by monitoring this position, I can either go in this airplane 20 millimeters forward or 20 millimeters back. That is the range. But the center portion is the 54 millimeter mark. Now, you can also see that it says that the nose is heavy and it wants me to remove 0.23 of a pound at this correction point, which is my black module. Now, I deliberately made the airplane a bit nose heavy. So now I'm going to remove the uh, prop hub and the prop and watch what happens to the weight. You'll see those red numbers change. Now I'm taking the cowling off. Now, by removing the cowling and the prop and the hub and that, notice now the airplane actually became tail, tail heavy. You'll also notice that this measurement has changed. 54 millimeters was the target, but now it's moved back. This measurement is actually taken from the axle of the main wheel. Now watch what happens when I start adding weight in my black compartment. Now you notice the red arrow getting bigger and bigger. And look at the weight. Like right now, it's showing about 4.3 pounds and it's nose heavy and it wants me to remove that. Also notice the little yellow or orange arrow, it's now at the eight millimeter mark. It has moved forward. As I remove the weight, you can see that red arrow is now decreasing. And if you look at the measured CG, it's changing its position. Now, subsequently, if I add uh, weight to the tail, watch what happens. Look at the arrow on the back. It's now saying the airplane's tail heavy. And it says I would have to add five pounds to, at the correction point. And again, the correction point is where my black module is. So I would have to technically put in there about almost five pounds of weight to counteract the tail heaviness. As I reduce the tail weight, you can see that red arrow is getting smaller and smaller. And then I, consequently, as I'm adding weight to the nose, the red arrow then shows up at the front of the airplane. So it's a really great system for positioning your CG, plus the fact that you can actually monitor the range. So as I said, if I ever wanna move the CG back, I can easily do that. I mean, the ideal spot was when it was at the 54 mark, where you can see it there, 54, but I can move the CG back and you can see it there. Now the numbers are changing. So it's a really great system. And as I said, you can do this by yourself. And I'll show you some other features that the uh, Sucroy is capable of. So here's the Sucroy balance and weight meter system. Uh, possibly if there's enough interest in the future, I'll uh, do a video on how to program the Sucroy. In other words, taking all the proper measurements from the airplane and uh, programming the data into the unit. It will uh, hold up to 100 airplanes. So it's kind of nice if you want to come back and recheck a particular airplane, the data will be already in your unit. So you can, you know, check the weight again or, or the CG. So for example, um, here we have uh, a laser 7.3, but I can change it. There's the slick or the Fokker. So you can select whatever airplane, the data is already in there, and then you choose what you want to check. So in this case, you saw how the weight and balance system uh, works. And here 
is the surface angles. In other words, you can check the flight controls. And right now it's set up for flaps. So there's a little computer sensors that get taped to whatever flight control you're checking. And you can check its movement, its degrees of angle. And uh, it's a really great system. Uh, allows you to really truly set up your flight controls accurately. And then of course, uh, needless to say, you can check the weight. And you can check the weight under each individual wheel or the total weight, and it'll weigh up to 200 pounds. So it's a great uh, all-in-one system uh, to check all these critical uh, parameters. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was one I wanted to share with you on how I manage the CG of an airplane. Of course, there's many different ways of doing it. If you like the video, please hit like and or subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.